Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as a one-handed mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. We have here a Toro SS5000 time cutter. It is a 50-inch mower deck. It actually has what they call a smart speed control system, which basically is three different positions. You can mow, which is the fastest. You can tow, which is kind of medium. And then under here, it says trim. And it just basically is, is fast, a little bit slower, and a little bit slower. So, you know, go ahead and read the manual, what you need to do to make that work. But basically, it's just a very slow speed. Then you have tow speed and you have mow speed. Okay, as far as operating it, Today we're going to show you how to operate it. We have, uh, make sure you want to check your oil to start. This is a Kawasaki twin cylinder motor. It's a good engine. This is a 23 horsepower FR691V. The oil dipstick is right here. Now there is one thing about the Kawasaki motors that I can tell you is that you do not screw the dipstick in to check the oil. So what you want to do is you want to unscrew it. You're going to take it out. You're going to wipe it off. And when you put it in, you just sit it on top. I usually give it a little bit of a hair of a turn and then bring it back out to check the oil. And it should be between your dots right there, between your lines where it says full and low. So you just want to double check that. This one is right on the mark. You have an hour meter right here, which is nice to have. This one here has 161.5 hours on it. Going underneath the seat, we have your battery, which is here. And we also have the model number of your machine, which is underneath these wires. I hope you can see this here, but the model number of this machine is right here. It's 74730, and then the serial number is underneath that. If you ever need to get parts for your machine, this is where you want to go on this machine to uh, get the model and serial number off the machine. That's the C itself here. It does slide back and forth, but there is no lever on the side. So you do have to loosen up these bolts to slide them. I'm pretty sure you just have to loosen this one up and this one up. And then these are already, they have a collar on them, so it'll slide. So those are the two to make your adjustments on your seat. You can't move the seat back and forth. As far as controls over here, we have your throttle. Of course, turtle for slow, rabbit for fast. This is the choke when it's cold start. You have your ignition switch, which is basically straightforward. It's key on. You have crank, and then it'll stay here when you're running it, and key off. And then this is your power takeoff. This is what actually engages your mower deck. Up and down. Okay, coming up to the front here, I'm going to hop on. And as far as your handles go, you have your two handles here. And when you, when you get off the machine and you want to do something, you can actually have this machine running. And as long as you have your arms out and your PTO switch off, which is your power takeoff to your mower deck, you can get off this machine while it's running, okay? And it's a, it's a nice feature that you can do that. It's basically by having these arms out, you're putting your parking brake on. Now, I do want to show you as far as uh, the parking brake goes. I'm going to show you in a minute. But as far as the deck up and down height adjuster right here, they also give you a foot pedal right here. Okay, this foot pedal along with this handle, if you just push on this a, li a little bit, that actually gets your handle... Just, it, it'll make it that much easier. You're using your leg power to move your mower deck up and down. You can muscle it just by going like this, but the reason why that lever is there, that foot lever is there, is so you can use your legs so it's easier to lift the deck up and down. It's a nice feature. I mean, you can do it either way, but this is your uh, up and down. It does show you the heights right here as far as I basically just say get into your grass, get it to where you like it, and try cutting. And if you like it where it's at, that's uh you know just leave it where it's at you do have your fuel tank over here and it has little teeny graphs little teeny pictures here which they're saying one it looks like it might be a manual two you're pumping gas and three they have this like no-no which basically they're trying to tell you is when you're one one here is a maximum 10 percent ethanol okay so don't want to go any higher than that but they're saying do not fill this up to the edge here you want to fill it up to the neck i'm not sure if you can see down in there where the fuel is at but don't fill it any much more than down where it is at the bottom of the neck or it can splash out that's what they're trying to tell you that i don't really like the fact that you can't see okay here it is all right i thought maybe there wasn't a sight glass but there is a sight glass right here and it's a little tricky even this is a full tank of gas you're not really seeing anything because it's full but this will allow you once you get lower to see the gas in there but just have to make sure that when you do start off that you have it filled up to the bottom of the neck there and that uh, it is a nice feature with this i didn't see that in the beginning but um obviously it's got a full tank and i can't see it sloshing around so i can't really tell other than opening up 
you know, and looking inside that we do have a full tank of gas. So that's, that's it for the gas tank. I am going to show you uh, how to start it and operate it. And basically you have to have the handles out. You have to have your PTO switch off and it's very, very warm right now. So we do not need to choke. Just going to take it up a half, half throttle. If it doesn't start within a little bit, make sure I would always suggest putting the choke on to begin with, depending on the temperature. Uh, and then take choke off if it hasn't if it doesn't crank right up. But we're gonna try it without choke. Start it right up. And then when you want ready to move, you gotta bring your hands far as in, and forward, backward, and you got that one, or actually right, and then left. And it's just a matter of you're just gonna go this way, or right, and that way, or that. And it'll take you a little bit. Now as far as getting off the while it's running. If you have your bars in, you can't really get off. Your bars are in the way, but if you put them out, go off. It'll run like this all day long. If the bars are in, it'll shut down. Okay, so that is a safety feature because when you put the bars out, it actually puts a brake on. And if you hear that, when I pull this bar in, you hear that, that's an electric brake. This is a, an option that Toro put on. Brake is on right now, brake is off. Um, that'll get me to the next point where you gotta make sure your key is off when you get off this thing and the tractor's not running so you don't kill your battery. All right, so you just turn it off. But if you ever need to push this machine, there's a couple things you have to do to push this machine. One is you gotta find out where your release valves are for the hydro transmission. And they are here. And there's one on the other side. So what you have to do is you have to push these in. There's a little collar here. You have to make sure you push it in and then you lock in the collar like so. And then you come around to your other side here and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna push this in, lock the collar in. Now that puts the hydro transmissions in neutral. And then you would think all you would need to do would be take your brakes off, which would be pulling these in. But right now the brakes are off technically, but I do not think it's gonna push and it, it's locked and the reason why that is is because there's an electronic brake on this machine so you have to turn your ignition key on and that releases your brake when your arms are in the in position now you should be able to push this now that's freewheeling and you have to remember that if these are not locked in they're not in freewheel but you also have to remember if you leave these in the in freewheel position and you get on the machine and you try to drive away it will not now i'm going to pull that one out I'm going to pull the other one out. Now, even with the brake in the off position and the key on, it should be locked. And it, it's, your hydros are pretty locked in right now, so you can't push them. So just remember, arms in. Make sure your key is in the on position. Make sure you remember to take that key off. Take it out when you're done with, with pushing or whatever. And your arms are in. Key is on. It should push. All right. And then as soon as we turn this key off, it'll actually, within, I think a few seconds, it'll lock the brakes like that. All right, so now you can't move it because the brakes are in locked position. All right, so you just have to make sure you pull to start it up again. You gotta have your handles out and you should be able to start this up, not sitting on it. As long as your brakes on, we should be able to fire this up. Just like that. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up for the Time Cutter SS5000 with the 50 inch mower deck on how to start and operate it. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I will catch you on the next one.